And don't we just love it? to the last in the present series of It's Only TV But I Like It and it couldn't be more exciting because Phil needs just one win to avoid an embarrassing 8-0 defeat. <laughs> <laughs> With Julian this week is the lovely Jilly Goulden. Good evening. Good evening. Jilly is, of course, well known for her colourful descriptions of wine, but she says her real area of expertise is writing about sex. Her husband has to take a deep breath before asking, how was it for you? It's tighter than a church warden's hat band and smelt like a mossy barn door. <laughs> and on Julian's right from holiday, it's Craig Doyle. <laughs> Craig travels the world presenting holiday, but says his biggest ambition is to run a farm. Craig, you know, you've really been out of the country for two years. <laughs> Team this week is Michelle Collins. <laughs> lovely, lovely. Of course, for years Michelle starred in EastEnders. She goes back so far, she remembers the time Daniela Westbrook said, No, not for me, I never touch it. <laughs> <laughs> and completing the lineup, it is, of course, the one and only Lawrence Llewellyn Bowen. One of the toughest challenges the Changing Rooms team faced was doing up two student bedrooms. Handy Andy broke three hammers getting the sheets off the bed. <laughs> <laughs> Those are our teams, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, there they are. Our first round tonight is TV trivia, where the teams are given three clues to an infamous piece of telly history. Phil's team, I'd like you to go first. What do you think it is that links these three clips? The witch researchers attempted to work their way through more than 21,000 telephone calls. Morning. Turned out nice again. <laughs> I was so shocked about the bloke taking the crap in the street as I was him wearing pyjamas. <laughs> Do you know, I've seen those things on the pavement and I always thought that there was dogs that did it. I obviously don't get up early enough. <laughs> I forget there were men in pyjamas out there doing it. <laughs> a bit of banana pointy. and he slips over the banana. <laughs> Could be. You wouldn't Could eat be. a banana while having a poo, that's disgusting. Uh, <laughs> I have. <laughs> Julian, I've got something wow. to confess. That wasn't a banana. Wasn't a banana. <laughs> you see, if I delivered that punchline, it would have gone so much <laughs> Is better. that what you were going? I'm so sorry. <laughs> I don't really apologise. You see, you pause for breath on this show, and he's in there like a ferret. <laughs> <laughs> so, telecommunications. Yes? Yes, well, I once had a BT engineer put an extension in my back passage. <laughs> Level I'll be working on. <laughs> Can you only now get five star on 0898 eight numbers? <laughs> Talking about crap. <laughs> well, I don't know anything about 80s music. I wasn't very keen on it. All those, you know, come on, Eileen. Where's the point of that? <laughs> I bet, I bet you, have, you have tried it with a lady, though, I bet. Yes, but I find it a bit squelchy. <laughs> <laughs> Same as well, we Lots. have been, we've been batting it around a bit, and um, <laughs> we, we have. A threesome. Yes. Oh, oh don't. The very idea. <clears throat> anyway, they'll be turning over in their millions. <laughs> Get the pecking order You're right. Um, <laughs> don't say cuddly. Oh, sorry. That says I like you as a friend. It's one of those remarks. <laughs> Go for stallion, country stallion, he likes that. Don't yeah, you? Just, just go for a waterbed with a knob and then... <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I have a dim recollection of um, Five Star being on a children's programme, and it was a telephone thing, and I think that a word was said which sort of flags up what's going on in the last frame. Uh, that, or, or they did a Motown cover version called Dumping in the Street. <laughs> Calling out around the world. You should have seen the video. <laughs> I'm going to ask for just one of those to be your answer. What are you going to go with? Somebody phoned up and said that they were crap. OK, well, that's, that's your answer. OK. Yeah. I think that Girl with the Braces yeah. was um, on a phone-in programme on a Saturday morning. Yeah. And some geezer rang up and instead of saying... Did we just say that? Excuse us. So, no. I know, but you didn't say the words, Lawrence. Oh, oh. you think they actually said <laughs> crap. Oh, Isn't it? Good Lord. <laughs> I felt quite aroused when you said that. <laughs> wow. that you wouldn't, would you? Well, you know, That's but... because she's posh and Yes, because you're an really. East Ender. Yeah, no. <laughs> Just as a personal favour, would you mind saying it again? Just standing here... <laughs> ..while touching yourself. <laughs> Let's see how close you are. Let's see who's right. Who's on line two? It's Elliot from Langley. Oh, hello. Oh, Elliot and the dog. Yeah. <laughs> what's the dog's name? Tammy. Good morning, Tammy. OK, Elliot, what's your question? I'd like to ask five star where they're so <laughs> crap. <laughs> Thanks very much, Elliot. Nice Bye. to hear from you. I'm sure <laughs> Tammy would have made a lot more sense. <laughs> Stedman from Five Star was later arrested for indecency in a public toilet. It all began with the line, Tonight, Matthew, I'm going to be George Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Julian Steen, it's your turn now, though. What connects these three clips? It's a good thing. I certainly would have never have met Trevor. Something happened, didn't it? It just clicked. Yeah. Yeah. Call Dateline on 071 938 and you too could find love. <laughs> If I was facing a firing squad, that would be my last request. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't wear gingham, though. I recognise the end bit, um, the last bit there. That's a festival they have in the Costa del Sol every summer. And they do that when they find something um, edible out of the resort's breakfast buffet. They just... Kind of <laughs> you must have, have you, where's the worst place you've stayed, Craig? Um, Benel Medina. Bella Medina. Yeah. Yes, Bella it's in the Costa del Sol. What was wrong with it? It was a dump. Dump. I've got a flat there. <laughs> Have you got a flat there? <laughs> so what? <laughs> no, that's that's where I stayed. No that's where I stayed. <laughs> is it um? Is it the people there? You don't like it? Don't you? <laughs> common. A bit common. <laughs> I'll give you a clue, Jonathan, it's where the pyjama bloke goes through his holidays every day. <laughs> That's not kind of really, I would have thought, not mission to be mean, but if you did fill in the dating agency form, you would meet that guy and think, why didn't I specify haircut? <laughs> I don't know what she sees in Trevor anyway. <laughs> I, I've, I've seen that face before. Have you? I've seen him down Madame Jojo's. <laughs> dancing the tango with Jeremy Spake. <laughs> to shock, but did you know that Amanda Holden rode naked through the innocent town of Portland? I can believe it. On a motorbike. <laughs> on a motorbike? On a motorbike. Well, two stroke. Something like that, anything wild, anything crazy. But I have ridden naked on a motorbike. Have you really? Yeah, very fast. Did it get you where you wanted to go, so to speak? <laughs> very quickly, yes, very quickly. Really? Quicker than so? if you, yes. Was there, was there a helmet involved? <laughs> No, that was before Helmet Days, actually. Was it? Yes. Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> We're very impressed by her wick quota as well. If you notice, each candle has at least three wicks in it. Can I ask you why you're dressed as David Essex this evening? <laughs> <laughs> Is it like a reunion I don't know about? <laughs> Move on from the kind of the silk suit and tie. Thing. It's a good look. Give us a little bit of, you know, going to make you a star. Go on. <laughs> How did he do it? We're, We're going to make you a star. Or Jimmy Cagney, whichever's better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 
<laughs> well, it's Amanda Holden in Happy Birthday Shakespeare. That's the show. I was once in A Midsummer Night's Dream. You may have enjoyed my bottom in Regent's Park. <laughs> The reviews were great. Okay. <laughs> Seven times a week. <laughs> uh, that's a, a blindfold, blind, and that's dating agency date, blind date, so therefore I think Amanda Holden might have been on blind date. My red suit chum is right. If can I be more precise? She was contestant number two. Let's have a look. Number two, what's your name and where do you come from? Hello, Stella. My name's Amanda and I'm from London. Uh -huh. <laughs> How could you help me get back to my previously slim figure? I'd grab <laughs> your love handles <laughs> and I'd shake them vigorously. <laughs> and then I'd just wait for all your flab to just fall into my hands. <laughs> Sounds like a nightmare. Yeah. It was the moment when a 19-year-old Amanda Holden appeared on Blind Date. As a young woman, Amanda says she'd often rehearse her Oscar acceptance speech. Come on then, Oscar. He's away. <laughs> that round was TV trivia, and here's another little known fact. On show one, we implied that this man, Colin Anthony, was no longer working in show business. Well, we've received hundreds of letters from Colin pointing out... <laughs> he's also sent us this message. Hi, Jonathan. Colin Anthony here. See, that's not too difficult to say, is it? And I'm not too difficult to find, you know. I do about 150 to 200 sell-out concerts a year with the Glenn Miller Orchestra. Bye. Yep, still working in show business, the lovely Colin Anthony. So at the end of that round, you've got four points, and Julian, you've got four points, so it's neck and neck. <laughs> our next round is food and drink. We've taken a clip of Oz Clark and our Jilly tasting beer and frozen it just before they unleash one of their colourful descriptions. The team has tell me what words they went on to use. I'm going to take you over the border to southern Germany, to Bavaria, Julie. <laughs> this one's called Weihensteffen, and I've actually been brewing this for 959 years. Mm. <laughs> OK, so you've got your beer out there. Cool, well, what a big head you've got. It's got a massive head. Did you work in the Queen, Vic? You tilt the glass. <laughs> I don't drink beer. Apparently not, madam. <laughs> no, you like the foam, though, You can't get you? past the foam, yeah. <laughs> Oh, I'll have a little sip I there. Lady. <laughs> Julian, am I right in thinking that you're not normally a beer drink, I would have thought? Oh, no, I got very drunk on beer um, a few, week Did few you? weeks ago at Sportsman of the Year event. Did you? Oh. Yep, I had a pint of Bex. <laughs> <laughs> I had a mouthful of Carling. <laughs> then I gave Sir Stephen Redgrave a wank. <laughs> How drunk I was. <laughs> Can I offer Julian my cheesy balls? <laughs> Can I give you my nuts? <laughs> Can we get on with the question? <laughs> well, I think it's very cloves. Definitely cloves will be one of the words. Whoa. Hey. I think that it's got a sort of struck flint sort of. A struck flint? <laughs> What is it, ironing? Sort of tinder box. That's because of... they haven't washed the glass, probably. <laughs> no stock flint. Do you enjoy a nice blonde Belgian when you're on your travels? <laughs> I do. You must get lonely. <laughs> trying to concentrate on my taste in here. Well, can... <laughs> but don't they make a lovely couple, though? <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever slip into the back of the Jolly Ploughman of an evening? <laughs> no. <laughs> I want to get out more. I just want to get out. <laughs> up here! Up here! Up here! <laughs> oh, I think we're that close to getting a tabloid cup, I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to say Is... rubber. Rubber? You know what? You're what close to something. I might give you one for that. I'll think about that. Okay. No. Be more specific. Plastic. Zinc. No. no. Tires. No. no. Tires. Tar. Sluggies. Ford Cortina. Yeah. <laughs> helium. I'm Don't getting you... helium, John. <laughs> 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 I've got to get those pipes fixed. <laughs> Honeycomb. You're not getting honey or honeycomb? Cheese. Honey what did you say, Julian? You <laughs> come on. Dirty sheets. <laughs> Nutmegs. Nutmeg. You are you. <laughs> you see? 
Yeah. I'm trying to get common. Pears. Pears. Oh. How come your hair's all curly Lost. in that picture? Can yeah. I introduce? That's how it is naturally. Let oh. me let, let you into a woman's secret. Nature can be cruel. <laughs> <laughs> Nature is cruel. But when you iron it, it goes out like this, is he? Iron it? No. <laughs> well, if that's the best you can do, and frankly, you might just say how very, very disappointed I am with all of you. Really, <laughs> what did seriously. he say? Come on. Have you ever had a bishop's finger? <laughs> Yes, I have. Very just... nice to and a rector's revenge. Oh, no. Have you had a rector's revenge? <laughs> well, I'd remember if I had. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see now. <laughs> I'm getting cheese. <laughs> <laughs> These are fantastic. I know about the beer. You can stick the beer up your ass. <laughs> Let's see what they actually said. Here we go. It, it doesn't taste like beer at all, does it? I mean, it tastes like sort of. Bananas and, and pears poached in white wine with cloves and, and nutmegs and, 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 and um, juicy fruit <laughs> chewing gum. Oh, and there's another flavour I know you get in this. Tupperware. No! <laughs> See, when you said rubber, Tupperware is like a plastic petroleum-based uh, material. I'm assuming I'm going to give you one for, for rubber. Okay? <laughs> and because I really like Rock On. That was a great single. <laughs> So, let's have a look at the points you had in that round. I see that. You've got yourself five points, which means, I think, for possibly the first time in this series, you're in the lead, Phil, with seven points. <laughs> Jilly, we've been watching loads of your tastings over the series, OK? And we've been enjoying them very much, and we think that we've spotted a little theme. Have a look at this. When you taste it... Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, guys. I am free in channel hopping, where our guests have 90 seconds to act out clues to five TV teams for our team captains. Lawrence and Michelle, if you would be so kind as to go round the back to the big TV round there. Get yourself ready. Uh, now, every week we have attempted to humiliate our captains with ridiculous headgear. But as a treat for the last show, we've let them choose their own. So, Phil, what fantastic earmuffs do you have for yourself? On my head tonight, Jonathan Ross, I bring to you the Priory. Wow, look at that. <laughs> Can I just say to the viewers at home, this is not the first time I've had Zoe Ball on my head. <laughs> it's the most viewers they've ever had, I think. <laughs> I can't hear you, Jonathan. I've got a chat show on my head. <laughs> if you're ready, let the channel hopping commence. Devil and the Fop. <laughs> Raffles. <laughs> David Essex meets Motorhead. <laughs> Devil Sins. Yeah! Well done. Yeah, look. That was pretty tough. <laughs> Some bird. Yeah. Well done. He emailed uh, uh, computer mail messages stuck on, sti stuck sticking attachments. Yeah! Wow. <laughs> no way out of that door. <laughs> to, uh, MTV, uh, remote control, television. Oh, it's this. It's us. It's only thing. <laughs> Oh, I like you now. <laughs> <laughs> Come dancing. That's who I got it. Five out of a fucking five. What about that, then? I couldn't be happier for you. Congratulations, Michelle. Good work. Lawrence, good work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Julian, Jilly and Craig have already made their way around to the back. Uh, Julian, what show are your amusing earmuffs based upon? My favourite show is, is um, Crime Watch, so it's based on that. <laughs> <laughs> if you ready, 
Let the channel hopping commence. And watch it matter. Good day. Tough one. Hearts and boats. Hearts and boats is right. Centurions? No. Bad girl. Yes. <laughs> Good top head. <laughs> Short circuit. <laughs> Look at Craig. Let them eat cake. Yes. <laughs> Holiday program. Is it Craig's program? Holiday Island, Treasure Island. <laughs> Holiday snaps. Holiday, Holiday snaps, snaps it is. You get four out of five. Oh, then you start. Just because you're not doing so well. At the end of that round, I see the points now stand with Julian at nine and Phil way in the lead with 12 points. <gasps> Whoa! Well it is now time for our narrator's round. I'll show the teams a clip without the sound and they must try to provide the commentary. I'll give a point for any key word from the original commentary they managed to include. Phil's team first. Your clip is from a wildlife on one documentary called Baboon's Rule OK. BBC Sport would like to welcome you to pro celebrity monkey sexing from Chippenham. I'm joined today by Lawrence Soylin Bowen and Michelle Collins. Michelle. Go, look at the false old that. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Michelle Collins. Lawrence, what do you think of the monkeys this year? Um, when you say, I thought that kind of purple blossom thing was very last season, but you can see now. <laughs> It's, it's a timeless classic. Now a bit of grooming. Yeah. Oh, Sleep. darling, your hair. <laughs> this one's obviously about to start getting... I'm, I'm getting creosote, I'm getting Tupperware. She's and and gravel. She's and oh, they're, off, they're off, there they go. Live monkey set, she's looking very good, very strong, and she's gone! Oh, oh, and she's gone! Why do you never look at me when you're doing that? <laughs> well, it was a joy to watch and listen to. Great stuff. You only got one of the extra words, though. Thank you for that. Last November, at a safari park in Merseyside, a family of baboons climbed onto a coach carrying 30 Liverpool school kids. They ripped off wipers and smashed the headlights while the baboons looked on in horror. <laughs> <laughs> Julian Steen, your clips from Come Dancing. <laughs> the Scottish team are led by Angus McSpreader, former Jitterbugger of the Year and known locally as the Queen of the South. He's been dancing for nearly 20 minutes, and it's his partner, Jock, who first persuaded him to take it up. <laughs> After his previous partner dropped out, they spent their weekends exploring the blends together and share a common interest in eating disorders. <laughs> Sheila lives in a bedsit in Motherwell, where she works out all the group's choreography on her shiny new Sony beatbox. <laughs> Although every Friday she goes round to visit Bernice for a go on her battered old bush. <laughs> well, you didn't get one single word there, unfortunately. You didn't get style, you didn't get two, you didn't get outfit, you didn't get sequins, you didn't get Glasgow. I said one, two at the start. <laughs> Dancing was controversially axed by the BBC in 1995, despite protests from thousands of dance fans who organised a massive protest mince. <laughs> <laughs> and at the end of that round, I see that the points now stand. Julian has 10 points. You've caught up a little bit there, but you're still in the lead, Phil, with 13 points. Hey! Well, in honour of Lawrence, we end with a brand new round where Changing Rooms meets Scrapyard Challenge. There's a Changing Rooms game out at the moment and we've created a life-size version here in the studio which the teams must do up 
using anything from a collection of everyday DIY titbits, plus three items that they've been allowed to specially pick from the scrapyard. Julian's team will give their wall a Dallas feel, <laughs> and Phil, EastEnders. And by the way, did I mention you only have 60 seconds to complete it? So, let the game commence. Right, now, what I think what we we'll do, we're going to go to the public and the private face of EastEnders. That's the public face. <laughs> You haven't done a lot of DIY, have you, Phil? I normally get a man in. <laughs> Dallas, eh? So. Well, no, no, look at this. This is GR's bedhead. Do you really as tight as it could be? That's one of the most pathetic things I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> this is looking <laughs> <wimpy. laughs> You can have someone's eye out, and you stop that, Jupiter. You got in trouble at school for that. Get off! <laughs> You know what, Lawrence? In actual fact, the work you do there is actually better than the work you normally do on changing things. <laughs> just get it up there. We got Wait, a knife. Just it up there. That's it. Hold it. Good work. And this is the bit where Carol Smiley comes in. It just fannies around. No, that's it. That's it. Your time's up. Your time's up. Okay. <laughs> Julian's team is meant to be a Dallas room. Do you want to talk us through it a little bit? What you think you've achieved here? Yes. We'll um, we'll start in the bedroom. Mind out the way, here's um, Sue Ellen with her shoulder pads. Oh, that's good. Nice touch. And um, someone's committed suicide with an overdose. Okay. Drinks cabinet. But... Shoes. <laughs> and Craig. This is a cow. <laughs> but with the addition of tablets, it becomes a mad cow. A mad cow. <laughs> Veneer here, but I'm afraid Craig wasn't very good at his side. But I think my little bit of panel. Oh no, that's not wood veneer. Good. That's plastic, sticky plastic. Oh, it's good. Sticky plastic. <laughs> well, I understand how you. Got I think you've done a pretty good job there. Let's find out what you guys think you've done over. This is meant to be EastEnders. Lawrence, you're the, the, the design genius here. You've got to tell me what was your concept, what was the overall theme, what were you hoping to achieve? We wanted to look beyond EastEnders. We wanted to shut up. We wanted to get. <laughs> The public and the private face. So we have the public face, we have the Queen Vic with Queen Victoria here and a uh, kind of bar thing. And then on this side, we, we celebrate the, the, the heyday of 80s decorating, which is EastEnders behind the thing, you know. And, and the key thing is, we got bloody Cindy Bill and Anita Dobson. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's your point. That's your point. Yeah. Yeah. You're a full tea for the EastEnders effort. Hi. Over here for the Dallas spread. What do you think? Easy. I think that's crystal clear. Come on back to the table, guys. Nice job. Nice job. Well done. Well, at the end of that round, you guys were clearly the winner there. You're in favourite. You did a lovely job. I'm going to give you the full five points. Oui, oui. OK? You did pretty well as well. I'm going to give you two points. <laughs> I'll tell you why. There's a, there's a method on my madness, because if I give them five, that means you have 15 points. And they have like, if you do two, you have 15, which means we end the series oh, on right. a draw, and everybody's happy! <laughs> A jam packed show. My thanks go to Jilly, to Craig, Julian, of course, Lawrence, Michelle, and Phil. We end with some music. We've got Scylla singing with Mark Bolam, an experiment known simply as Glam Frock. <laughs> Coincidentally, this was filmed uh, the last time that Lawrence's hair was in fashion. So, <laughs> <laughs> until next time, thanks for watching. Good night. <laughs> Life's a gas, and I hope it's gonna last.